Many people who spot a slow worm for the first time think that they're looking at a snake or a worm. It can be a bit confusing, therefore, to learn that despite both their name and appearance, slow worms are actually lizards. But how is this possible? And what do we actually know about slow worms? I'm going to be covering everything slow worm in this video. As I do so, I'd love to hear from you in the comments if you've ever come across one of these fascinating creatures. Subscribe to Ferro Forest to keep learning about UK nature. You might look at this and be thinking, how is that possibly a lizard? Look at it, it's got no legs. While it's a bit unusual to learn about at first, legless lizards are actually pretty common around the world. Legless is a feature in lizards that seems to have evolved multiple times in different lizard groups independently of each other, and it also tends to be associated in those lizards that prefer to burrow or live in long grass. Losing and gaining features is a common evolutionary process that takes place over many generations. Let's start with this slowworm ancestor that has legs. Slowworms spend a lot of their time burrowing in the soil and vegetation. If these legs are getting in the way of that action and making it harder for an individual to survive, then it is the individuals with the shorter legs that end up surviving the longest and producing the most offspring. Eventually, with each generation, these legs get shorter and shorter until they disappear altogether. Now you have the slow worm, a legless lizard. That was a rather simplified version of how evolution works and how selection pressures, like burrowing being beneficial, can be put on different animals. However, I hope that it did illustrate how a lizard could potentially lose its legs over time. But when you're looking at an animal, how can you tell whether it's a legless lizard or a snake? There are multiple features that distinguish a legless lizard, like our slow worm, from a snake, like our grass snake. Firstly, does your animal have external ear holes? If it does, then it's a legless lizard. If not, it's a snake. Next, is your animal blinking? Legless lizards have eyelids and so are able to blink, while snakes have a clear scale that protects their eyes so you won't see them blink. What does your animal's tongue look like? A snake has a distinctive thin forked tongue, while legless lizards have thicker fleshier tongues. This can be a tricky one if you aren't familiar with reptiles, because slow worms do have a notch in their tongue that could be mistaken for a fork if you're not used to seeing snake tongues. Next, how long is your animal's tail? Each reptile has a vent, which is where they reproduce and excrete waste from. Everything up to the vent counts as the animal's body, and everything after the vent counts as its tail. A lizard will have a much longer tail compared to its body size than a snake. This can be a complicated one to test, because slowworms are a lizard that are capable of dropping their tail, which would make the tail seem much shorter than it actually is. However, the stubby tail growing back is another sign of a lizard, since snakes don't drop their tails. So, there are lots of features that help us tell slow worms as lizards, apart from our native snakes. Now we're going to talk a bit more about specifically identifying slow worms. However, if you do want to learn a bit more about telling the differences between each of the native snakes, I do have a video up on my channel that you can go and watch after this. You could also compare that video to this one to find out if you can spot any more unique features that slow worms have. Slow worms have small, smooth scales which give them a polished, metallic appearance. They grow up to around 40 centimetres and both males and females can come in a variety of shades between grey and brown. Males have a broader head and can sometimes have blue spots on their sides, while females have a dark line on their underside and darker sides. Slow worms can be fully black, but this is rarer than in other UK reptiles. They are born at around 7 centimetres long and have a black spot on their head. Younger slow worms tend to look similar to females, but with better defined markings. They are lighter than adults with a silvery appearance and have black sides with a thin black stripe on their underside. Slow worms prefer to live in humid, shaded locations and will spend most of their time underground, hiding in deep vegetation or warming up underneath sunlit rocks. They're found across a range of habitats such as rough grasslands, woodland edges, heathland, hedgerow bases, and meadows. However, you're most likely to spot a slow worm within your own garden. Urban populations are common and will be found in places such as within piles of old grass cuttings, compost heaps, log piles, and on rail and road embankments. Slow worms are widespread across Britain, being most common in the south of England, and then getting a bit more spread out as you go further north. 
They are present in one location in Ireland, but they're thought to have been introduced there by people because they're not native. Slow worms eat a range of invertebrates, which are animals that don't have a backbone. This includes snails, slugs, worms, crickets and spiders. A lot of these species tend to be considered pests by gardeners, so gardeners tend to really like seeing slow worms in their garden. Because a lot of the slow worm prey tends to be slippery and wriggly, slow worms have actually evolved to have backwards curving teeth, which helps them bite down and secure their prey. Although they can bite humans, they don't tend to, and these teeth actually don't proceed very far from beyond the gum line. So even if they do, they don't tend to break human skin. Slow worms have a cyclic life history. In March, males will emerge from hibernation, shortly followed by females. Between April and June, the males will become aggressive with each other and compete for the ability to mate with females. From August to September, the females will give birth to up to 25 live young. Like some of our native reptiles, the slow worm is oviviparous. This means that the females lay eggs which hatch inside her, the young live off of egg yolk in there for a bit, and then when she's ready, the female gives birth to the live young. Her offspring will often choose to cluster together. Once October hits, the slow worms will head to their hibernation sites where they will stay until March comes around again. These sites are any warm, sheltered crevices, such as unused mammal burrows, compost heaps, dense vegetation and rotting tree stumps. Slow worms will often share the same hibernation sites as each other. But why do slow worms hibernate? Well, that's because they're ectothermic animals, or what's more commonly known as cold-blooded animals. The term cold-blooded isn't very accurate because their blood isn't actually cold. Both cold-blooded and ectothermic refer to an animal that can't regulate their own body temperature and so relies on external sources of heat. On a cold day, we might start shivering to warm ourselves up, whereas a slow worm will need to move into a spot of sunlight to be able to bask and get the heat that way. Once the temperature starts to get too hot, we'll start to sweat to cool down, whereas a slow worm will need to move into an area of shade to cool down that way. Once the temperatures start dropping as we head into winter, the average temperature gets so low that not even basking can help bring up a slow worm's temperature enough that they can keep functioning. That's why they hibernate, so that they can maintain all of their energy reserves in a nice warm spot over winter and then be physically capable of hunting and mating once the environment warms up again in spring. So now you know all about the UK's legless lizard. If you want to learn about even more of our reptiles, be sure to check out some of my other videos on this channel.